Guard duty is unfortunately a bit of a disappointment for me, because I went into it wanting a modern equivalent of something like 1990s Monkey Island, one of my favourite games as a kid. And while the game does have fun characters and story, and some nice light-hearted comedy, it fails in one major area. Gameplay. Happy birthday to me. It's all about a guard who has to save the entire future of humanity by pointing on things, clicking on things, and rescuing the princess. You start off as an unlikely hero, getting drunk on your birthday, waking up half naked, getting a bee's nest stuck on your head, and then go on to be thrown out of the castle. But it's all uphill from there as you decide to prove yourself and save the day. I love all of the different characters that you meet on this journey, each with their own ye old English accents. You have chosen wisely. There you go. And it makes me smile playing through it. It's got a lot of charm and makes for a nice change of pace from the usual shooting things and killing everything that moves. But here's the problem. The game is just so simple and so straightforward that it never really challenges the player to have to sit back and figure anything out. You always know what needs to be done next by using your ever-growing to-do list, which makes things so obvious that rather than leaving it up to you to find out what to do, it basically just tells you. There's no wandering around the map puzzled as to what to do, exhausting every dialogue option, and with items you can't figure out where to use, which means that the game doesn't have any eureka moments. There's never any satisfaction of working things out. There's a lot of fun moments in the story, but no fun or clever solutions to go along with them. A man is in a pit. How do you get him out? You get a ladder. Done. It would have been nice to have some more imaginative solutions to some of these scenarios. I'm afraid you'll be needing the DLC to access any areas beyond this point. What in God's name is DLC? Sounds like some sort of horrible disease. Okay, that is pretty funny, but I wish the game had more to do. Some items you get you may never even need to use. There's a bunch of fun characters, but a lot of them, in fact almost all of them, have nothing to do. This guy, not important. This guy, not important. I think it's a funny joke having a completely useless trinket shop, which turns out to be completely useless as far as story and gameplay goes, but when almost every shop and every character is also completely useless, then the joke's kind of not that funny anymore. You can talk to all of these different people to find out their backstories, which are entertaining enough, but I wanted all of them to have their own side quests or to have an item you need to somehow get them to give to you in order to move on with the story. I like it when everything in an adventure game has its purpose and then all of it eventually comes together to form the solution. On my second playthrough, I didn't even have to think about what I was doing or what was the most efficient way of getting through the game, because it's all fairly linear. You have some big areas, but then there's nothing to do in them. Monkey Island did a great job of creating this creepy atmosphere, often with rooms you knew you weren't meant to be in so you didn't want to get caught, creating some tension. Guard duty always feels a bit too safe. And then we get to Act 3. Now if you've seen the trailer to the game, or even if you've played the first minute or so, you know that it's not really a spoiler that the game has part of it take place in the future, in the year 2074. And the game then really switches gear. Switches very... Metal Gear? Metal Gear. Hey boss, how's it look? Creepy, to say the least. The general said you have the details on the bio. I had to wait for the credits to check whether David Hayter, voice of Solid Snake, actually worked on this game or not. He didn't, but it's a very good impression. And as for the gameplay in this act, uh, unfortunately, it's even worse. It's even more linear, with virtually no exploration, with only seven or eight rooms, with only one or two things to do in each, which are often just clicking on things and then you move on. You don't even have to select which item you want to use, as, as long as you have the right item on you, the game will automatically use it. It's about as basic as a point and click can get. Again, the story can be fun, so maybe it's worth playing through once for that alone, but it's hardly going to go down as an adventure game classic. Thanks for watching.